Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game that was played in New York, 1963, in a Skittles room. So this was just a casual game between Bobby Fischer playing on the white end and Reuben Fine. So let's dive in and see how this one played out. A 17 move kill. B4 is what denotes the Evans Gambit. What is White getting for giving up a pawn? Well, as per usual with the Gambit, some speedy development. To be a bit more specific regarding this Gambit, White is looking to overtake Black's strongest pawn, or at least challenge it quickly, the E5 pawn. Without the E5 pawn around, uh, this means that the King Knight, one of the things this can mean, is that the King Knight will not feel so secure on its favorite square. Why can give it a shove with e5. Moreover, the queen now has a path to b3 after this c3 move, and white can coordinate well against black's most sensitive square, f7. Okay, in the game it's bishop a6. This is considered most popular. Second most popular is to drop the bishop back to e7. Continuing, we have d4, sure enough. And after a capture, white cannot be recapturing and forming a pawn duo. But white has gained something in that the pawn is no longer on e5. And from here, white now gets castled. So there is no longer this pin. And given a move, white is ready to recapture on d4. In this game, Reuben is a bit hungry for pawns, capturing on c3. Maybe a bit on the greedy side, right? White continues with queen b3, sure enough, making use of this post and applying pressure to f7. This can only be defended with the queen, and it becomes already very important uh, what square the black queen go to. Best is considered queen to f6 here, but, um, you know, there's still a lot of pressure that white can be putting on black if queen f6 is played in this position. In this game, it's queen to e7, so keeping open the f6 square for the knight. White is now the side who is better. Knight takes c3, and if this game is to continue, black needs to do, uh, well, it needs to make a capture on c3. In this game, fine underappreciates the strength of the queen knight arriving on the d5 square. In connection with the pawn on e4, yeah, this is a big problem. The knight needs to be addressed, needs to be taken out. Isn't in this game, instead knight f6, in a way maybe trying to offset the knight, but white can now just hop in to d5. After knight takes knight, how would you recapture? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, the best way to recapture is with a pawn. If you capture with a piece, it's true this diagonal stays open, but what's more important, what's most important in this position, is that you dictate play. You throw punches in this open position and make use of this superior development. Best is to take with the pawn the move played in the game, throwing a punch, and most importantly, allowing now a path for the remaining pieces to work with, the rooks will now have an open e-file. Knight e5 in the game. Knight is captured. Development with tempo. And this bishop now points at g7. Queen must defend. Queen actually has two important jobs. First and foremost, defend g7. And another, watch over e3. The queen can quickly look to uh, attack along the e-file. White is already in a position to give up some more material, giving up the exchange, just to have the queen, both bishops, and a rook attacking the king. Look at these guys on the queen side, not contributing at all. From here, we have a deflection tactic, h4. Queen has to make a decision, give up defensive g7 or e3. In the game, it's queen takes h4. If, let's say queen to g6, this is what white could do as a follow-up. Give a check, and then get in along the e-file, and this game will be ending soon. Computer suggests queen e6 is best to hold on, but yeah, this is a mate in seven. Here's one quick way that the game could end.
Pick your favorite way. You have a few different mates from here. That one's pretty slick. Anyhow, in this game, we don't have queen g6. Queen takes h4 instead. And now in comes bishop takes g7. That's like the two-point pawn. Just went down. How healthy are these two? Not very healthy. They're now isolated. Rook g8. And now rook e1. It could be captured. Fine doesn't go ahead and uh, capture the rook. But even if he did, the game would have uh, ended in, this, in a similar way. King to d8. In the last move of this game, feel free to pause the video and see what Fisher did next. Okay. In the game, we had another deflection tactic, just as h4 deflected the queen away from observing both e3 and g7. Well, the queen has a very important role of defending the f6 square here. Queen g3 is the final move of the game. Fine resigns. What's the idea? Well, queen takes queen. That's checkmate. No need to even have a queen in this position. The king is very short on squares. So a quick kill here. There is no other uh, move for Team Black. Computer says queen e7 is best. But uh, yeah, of course, we could just take the queen. And we're winning in this position as well. Actually, a mate in two. White can insist on this same idea with bishop f6. But this is as far as it went in this Evans Gambit. Very sharp opening. And, well, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comments section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away from it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.